Yo, what's up, y'all? It's Torrance, and I'm back this week with another video. This week, I'm doing something different. This little segment is going to be called Film Sessions. And during the film sessions, you basically gonna get a play-by-play -play of what I do during my shoots. I'm going to talk about things like techniques, gear, some headaches or hurdles that I had, and more importantly, my favorite shot. Now, it's not going to be like ESPN play-by-play. -play. I'm not going to be circling stuff, saying, hey, this is what I did. But I'm just going to make it a real tasteful and creative little package that you may like to look at. Hold up. Before we get to the film session, I would like to thank everybody who's been supporting me so far. People's been commenting and liking the videos, sharing the videos. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe now. Like, just, I'm going to give you a second. All right, good. So now, let's go on to the film session. I hope you guys like it. I'll be back with my little critique. Peace. Yo, what's up, what's up? I hope y'all enjoyed that little film session. Yo, during this photo shoot, I shot with a model. Her name is Gwen. I'll put her Instagram down below. Check her out. She's super creative, super cool. We always have some pretty nice photos once we get done working together. But my first topic that I want to talk about today is the equipment I use. I use this puppy here. I'm going to buy an RB67 Pro SD. Um, and during the shoot, I used mainly two lenses, which was the 65 millimeter and the 180 millimeter. Um, and obviously, obviously I use my light meter. Where would I be without you? Bruh, without the light meter, none of this would be possible. You know what I'm saying? Like, you the real MVP. But, yeah, so I used the Mamaya. Um, the two films that I used, I used the Ektar 100 and the Kodak Portrait 400. I used the 100 in the areas that were very bright and then I use the 400 in the shadier areas in the alleyway. Um, and I got some pretty good results. So obviously, while I was shooting in natural light, I didn't have my strobe with me. I didn't have anyone to hold a reflector or anything like that. So I was using natural light. And when I use natural light, I'm always looking for not only just lit spaces, but shadowy spaces or where the shadow kind of falls in a certain way that's different. Uh, I would suggest you do the same. One trick I always do, it's, it's kind of a weird trick. I put my hand in front of me, just like this, and I see where the shadow falls on my hand. And that way I can see, okay, the sunlight is falling like that. And for this particular shoot, I was shooting around 4, 35 o'clock, and I thought the sun was actually gonna be pretty low in the sky, and it, it really wasn't. It was still kind of at a high point. Um, you know, getting used to this summertime or close to summertime. Yeah. I should have probably shot just a little bit later, maybe closer towards 6, 6.30. Um, and I probably would have got some better little side lighting. But even with the light up top, I was just being creative, you know, telling her to turn her head sometimes, not looking into the sun. Some of the backlit things, you know, kind of having like this little crescent. Uh, so you, I would say most definitely get creative if you use a natural light. Um, just don't find that one little pocket of great light if people will say, oh, this is good light. Like you hear all the little Instagram people, oh, this is good light, and stay in that pocket. No, look for some shadows, look for some areas where the light, it tells a story. I'm sure you notice that on some of the images, I have this huge flare. Sometimes it's kind of cool. Other times it's like, mm, it's a little too much. Uh, that's not post, that's from the lens. Um, and it's because your boy forgot to put a lens hood on and properly use it. Which for these, you know, you gotta pop them up. So it can be on and it cannot be working. I don't I don't remember having it on, 
I don't think I had to lean to it on. And that was just a knucklehead move on my part. Um, and it just, it tells me the future, slow down. It won't happen again, you know, it won't happen again because it happened and it came out with my results. Like I said, some of them look cool because it kind of looks like a little retro type situation, but I kind of wanted those images to be clean, those backlit images. All right. Let's talk about my favorite shot from the shoot. Now, usually I'm not one to pick out, this is my one favorite, this is my baby. I love this shot. I'm usually not that cat, but for the second video and second entertainment, we gonna do it. My favorite shot from the shoot goes to the Polaroid. This shot here. Um, I didn't mention earlier that I used Polaroid because I only used it for one image, but um, that film, that pack film, that Polaroid pack film, it produces some crazy colors. And it's just, it's, it's love, man. Like when it comes out of your camera and you're able to see that instant, like that instant look right then and there, like it just gives you that little boost. It's almost, it's almost kind of like that digital boost. You know, like when you shoot digital and you look at the back and you see that money shot. Like when I seen this shot, I was like, oh man, if none of these other images come out, I at least got this one image. And this was my absolute favorite image from the shoot. The other image is the image where she was in a green dress on a white wall. I just love what the light was doing, what the background was saying, like what her, how her style looked. It was just a complete package. So that's all I got for y'all today on the film sessions. I hope y'all enjoyed, like I said before, like and subscribe, share. It's a community, let's help each other out. Like I said last time, buy you a film camera. Buy you one of these work courses right here. Shoot, shoot, I'll catch y'all later, peace.